microphone. All right. So I call it to order at 3.03. We are up and running with three members present, so we just make quorum. And we are on Zoom also. First order of business is uh, roll call. Director Finch? Here. Director Dow? Here. And Director Jeffrey? Here. Thank you. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance is next. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Uh, director announcements starts with the mutuals. I have nothing to report. Oh, high water conservation district. Um, nothing. Just, just for the record. Oh no. Yeah, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm community facilities. Uh, nothing on water conservation district. City of Ojai bill is not here. Casitas. Roger is not here, and Bob, community facility. Uh, on community facility, um, I had three calls in, in a reaction to the um, the flyer that Casita sent out to the uh, to the users. And interesting, the three questions they asked is: Was Casita's pumping out of the basin and then selling water to the east end? They talked about a well. And I said, I didn't know. I didn't have the flyer at this time. And I didn't think so. So I, I don't believe that Casitas takes, I don't take, they, I don't believe that they pump from the San Antonio well field and pump it to anywhere except into the community facility district. That's what I believe. That would that's, be my, that's, that's my best That's assessment. my guess also. Um. general manager comments we don't have a general I'm just clicking we're we're really yeah we are but yeah no kidding it, John probably be here shortly um, but he was facing traffic okay yeah he's walking in the door as we speak so okay we'll give him a minute let's just hold off on that uh let's go jordan let's just jump to basin status report sure okay well i'm i'm going to share the screen here to go through some of the photos might take a second for these to arrive okay so there you go this is the, the big question we always get after the the angry inch of rain first arrives um, is how much rain fell in the in the basin and how much fell in the tributary area and what effect did it have on the basin and really that's the essence of this this uh, uh, ongoing agenda item of basin status reports uh, as you can see from this screen grab of from the Ventura County Watershed Protection District, each of these green uh, ovals represent a, a monitoring station for precipitation. That 3.54 you see sort of in the top middle of the screen is, is right uh, at, the, at the ridge, Nordoff Ridge, uh, the very edge of the San Antonio Creek tributary area where three and a half inches uh, have fallen effectively this month. This is mostly over the past uh, past week. 3.54 inches compared to two inches less than that down by Hermitage Ranch and about 1.32 inches on the valley floor. Uh, all of this is very welcome, of course, uh, largely to do with soil moisture and really a lack of need for short-term irrigation uh, in, in the area. It's not a lot, but it's a lot more than what we had over much of the storms uh, and several dry months in the past year. So we're, we're on our way to nearly half of what, what we would have received in the entirety of the 2020 to 2021 water year. 
So what does that do to the basin? Here's a nice little graph, something we couldn't have delivered uh, just a few months back. And this is what's happening in the perched aquifer system. Uh, this is a, a plot of water levels in the perched aquifer at the depth of screen monitoring well uh, down on South Fulton Street. So you can see that this is pretty stretched out. The scale here is, is about a foot from top to bottom. Uh, this is feet of, of water plus air pressure over the logger, so it's raw. But you get an idea about how much change that storm had on the perched aquifer system. Uh, Not a lot. Yeah, but, I, want, I can say that I can't read a scale, so... Yeah, so I'll narrate the scale. Um, over the, the x-axis, this is only, um, only about a month of time, uh, each data point being collected about 90 minutes apart. On the y-axis, temperature is not shown, that would be the red, but the blue dots are the water level. So you see a rough decline of... Uh, of about half a foot over this month of time, and then almost instantaneously, the increase in water level of about three quarters of a foot uh, associated with that storm, and still rising at that point, when we downloaded this the other day. So a pretty rapid response in the perch dock for system, which is a little bit different than what we see in the basin as a whole. Over San Antonio Creek, still looking pretty dry this week um, in the middle portion of the basin. But we do see a, a water, of course, eventually. And, and we see these little guys swimming along in the creek, just, just downstream from where water daylight's uh, emerging from the basin. Those look like some pretty happy fish. They're, they're probably a royal chub, um, and probably more than we've seen in a while. But it's, they're getting some flow from the, the storm passage as opposed to much significant increase in, in groundwater flow largely coming out of the perched aquifer. This is where we measure it. You can compare this to some previous times, but not a lot more water coming in. Even with the storm, it tended to be pretty flashy. Uh, as you know, whatever surface flow came through went through pretty fast, and we're seeing back to consistent conditions. We do see some ponding of water at higher elevations up San Antonio Creek, but that's not very long lived. In fact, over at Montgomery, we're still looking like it just got a flush through. And folks still drilling. Back to this guy. All right, so how much water was flowing out of San Antonio Creek at this time? Um, this is our 27 October, so just yesterday. Um, very consistent with what we've had, 0.07 CFS. Very similar to what we've had over the past few times. So that 7 tenths of a foot increase in the perch dock for a system is consistent with what we see in, in discharge, very consistent uh, to previous, not a, lot of, not a lot of improvement as far as discharge. Uh, let's see. Let me leave this for a second. Stop this share. Share another content. So here's one of our favorite charts. And if I zoom in to where the surface water is flowing over the past two years or so, we didn't observe the complete over the basin flow during this storm. It may have happened, but very flashy and not enough to see any consistent flow, which would result in a blue bar vertically throughout this graph. What we do continue to see is the near uh, steady decline 
of water in the key well, which is the bluish line there in the middle. And if I zoom into that, you can kind of see where it started to become asymptotic and we may be at the nadir for the year if water levels continue to, to increase. Uh, declination in the perched aquifer is the, is the yellow triangles, whereas the orange and warmer colored triangles are deeper in the, in the main aquifer system, more correlative with what's happening uh, on the uh, key well area. Down in the lower portion of the graph, we have the CFS in the magenta X's near the tenth of a CFS discharge from the basin and the elevation of daylighting water, again, very horizontal. So consistent with what our previous interpretations have been and happy to answer any questions and stop this share. Jordan, could I just, if you could bring your computer, it's the, the iPhone screen just gets it so vertical. It's hard to see in the future. Yeah, it's a, it's a little tricky and, and or maybe if you turned it sideways, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, Let's see if that happens. Any questions for Jordan? All right. All right. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, we'll wait just a second here and. John, we skipped over you. We'll come back to you at this point if you have some comments. Yeah, I just have a couple things to report. Um, I sent by email, and I don't know if everybody's received it. it. It wasn't from our legal counsel, but it was from Myers Nave, who's, I believe, in Westlake Village, talking about Assembly Bill 361, and this was the extension of the Brown Act requirements. And so it really doesn't affect OBGMA that much as long as you're meeting in public. The, the, the real requirements um, as far as notice and participation and all that, it relates to mostly if, if you're going to hold public meetings by Zoom only. But I thought the board should be aware of that. We talked about it last meeting. And uh, we're, still, we're still doing this by Zoom. I still think it's a good idea, especially with the groundwater sustainability plan. And so we'll, we'll keep doing the Zoom meetings at least for a while until the board decides they, you want to do something different. Okay. Um, Last, uh, second item I just wanted to mention, um, I believe, I don't know if I sent it all to all of you or not, but I did complete a, um, on October 7th, I did complete a reimbursement request for reimbursement for the monitoring well um, under the grant that we have, and that was $83,000 at this point. So they're reviewing it, and, you know, I'll hopefully see something pretty soon on, on reimbursement for those expenses. Very good. Um, I think it would be appropriate under this general manager's comments to Roberta, if you could tell us about Ojai Day and that. And well, I believe it was a success. We had Matt Matley um, from Dudek come for three hours and. We had a lot of people come up and interested. We were um, able to give out a lot of information. Chair Hages was there for a little bit. Um, Bill Warwick and Peter Vilke helped set up. So I believe it was a success. A success. Thank you very much. Uh, now is time for public comments not appearing on items on the agenda. We have anybody on screen? Our, our one pub person from the public shook his head <laughs> no in town. <laughs> All right. Uh, consent items number seven, approval of the minutes of June 9th and June 24th. Yeah, I apologize. We're going to have to come back and give you that. We've got, we've got a lot of minutes to get caught up on. And so That'll be tabled. Get that done. Act, treasurer's report. I uh, just want to give you a brief overview. Um, as of this report for the end of month ending September, September uh, 2021, we had a balance of, of funds of $77,795. Uh, 
Um, we've had inflows about $3,182, expenses of $11,427, and net change in position of a minus $8,244. Most of the expenses are, are, are pretty consistent with what we normally have each month. Um, there's this report has uh, action reconciliation detail for the checks and the expenses for the bank accounts, so you're going to start seeing that more often. And lastly, um, it's interesting. Uh, we, we have an invoice from DUDEC. Uh, I want to say it's around $95,000 which is a lot more than <laughs> what we've got in the bank, but um, we've only collected, received about a little over $37,000 of, of, um, of revenue through our, through our pump charges. This time last year, we received 105,000. So we're still due a lot of uh, significant amount of revenue um, to come in there. Of course, that's all based on pumping, but I have to think that we probably had more pumping this year than last, considering the way the weather's been. I, I don't know. There's a fair amount of groves that have are dry. Mm, okay. Well, that's good to know. But I, I certainly don't think it's going to remain at thirty-seven thousand dollars. And I think that's all I have. Oh, uh, so far, according to this report, and again, we haven't received all the statements. I don't believe. Is that correct? Roberta, we haven't seen all the statements yet, but this says there was pumpage uh, so far through this water year of 3,819 acre feet. So uh, I have to believe we're going to see a, a little bit more than that yes. at the end of the year. That's all I have. Thank you, John. Any questions on that? If not, I think it's uh, appropriate to get a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Motion to accept. Bob, Bob thank you. <laughs> Takes both of you to do it. Uh, Roberta, call the roll, please. Director Finch? Yes. Director Daddy? Yes. Director Fieldy? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. GSP status update. Sure. Uh, I, I don't have a presentation today. Uh, the uh, draft GSP is out for uh, public comment. You can access the draft through the Ojai Basin GMA website and download it and submit comments um, to uh, GMA via email. Um, and then just in terms of where we're at, uh, on December 9th, uh, we're, we're going to have the public hearing to potentially adopt the GSP. And currently, from a uh, budget standpoint, we're at 77% of the uh, contracted budget. So we're currently projecting that we're going to be under budget for uh, the groundwater sustainability plan. I need to provide at least some good news. <laughs> but to put that in a little bit more perspective, there, there's uh, almost a hundred thousand dollars left in the budget, so it, it is likely going to be substantially less than what we originally estimated. Very good. Let me uh, just uh, add on to that just briefly. Um, I had a little bit of problem, and, and we had a short time, but um, the groundwater sustainability draft groundwater sustainability plan is available uh, on the website. When you click on it, it actually takes you to a public folder on my Dropbox account. So, um, so because when we use Dudex link, it pulled up not only the PDF but also all the Word files. And I didn't want to have all the word files out there for people to change and all those kind of things. So, uh, if, pe if the public has comments, they can download, as Trey said, download the document, and then they can uh, provide written comments to us uh, via email. And that's also on the website as well. It says where that email link is. Can, how will the 
email comments be handled or distributed to the directors so we can see are they there that we could all no that this particular email account i believe goes through dudek right and we we will compile all of the uh comments and then we'll typically categorize them into themes and we're intending at the december 9th uh, meeting to provide an overview of just the themes of the comments and some general responses. We're not necessarily going to get a response for Each. every single comment. And then um, in Sigma, there, there's not a requirement actually to uh, respond to all the comments. It's really at the discretion of the board whether or not you would like responses included in the GSP that gets submitted to Department of Water Resources. We've had some clients who have provided for formal responses for each comment as part of the GSP. We have others who have not. And then I just want, I want you to keep in mind that once uh, the GSP is adopted and submitted to Department of Water Resources, the Department of Water Resources has a separate comment period. So what we've kind of seen in other plans is that basically it's, it's twice, almost twice the work if you do uh, respond to comments the first time around because you're going to have all many of the same comments again submitted to Department of Water Resources. And do our co do these comments get for attached and forwarded to Water Resources? You you have the discretion whether or not to do that or not. We've had some uh, agencies who have gone ahead and included all the comments as part of an appendix to the GSP and provided those to Department of Water Resources and actually some have provided responses, some have not. And we have others who simply uh, took in the comments. They may have made some minor re revisions to the GSP and did not submit uh, comments to DWR. But DWR has a separate process, and you will most likely get a, many of the same comments again um, as part of that secondary comment period. When, uh, when we did the alternative and also with the GSP, uh, we had to go through the Department of Water Resources and set up access through their web portal. And so uh, uh, if I recall on the alternative, we did see comments from the public when the document went to the Department of Water Resources. So we've got that login information um, and we'll see what comments come in once we submit it to DWR for, for their review and, and public comments. Uh, question for who I'm, whoever, um, is comment to one comment to all? Or can we just select certain comments that maybe five or ten or fifteen people have addressed, or do we have to if we if we choose to comment at all, do we have to answer each one? I'm wondering if we have a criteria. No, I think well, it's certainly up to the board. Uh, I know in EIRs many times the comments like Trey had talked about are consolidated, and there's themes, and then you respond to the theme. And so I think that's the approach that we're talking about here, that we'll take a look at the themes and see if there's any, any incorrect assumptions made through the comments that we need to, need to put out, why we don't think that is either correct or here's something we'll include in the plan or something of that nature. Anything else? Yeah, I, I just recommend that we go through the comments that we received and provide some general responses and see if there's anything that, that stands out that we think needs to be addressed prior to December 9th um, and if not you know I I'd encourage uh, potentially waiting to that second DWR common period to to really tackling everything but if there's something that's brought forth you know oops we you know made a mistake we can tweak it exactly yeah if there if okay a and if 12 people point out our mistake one one response to those okay right so i don't think it's each one we can well, I don't want to make sure it's each yeah no no i i, I think it's, it's yeah it no i know and that uh, next question um are we going to get some of these ahead of time or is this a brown act deal where we're going to get them right when everybody else gets them and we're going to get them all in a group or is this something that will flow in that we can look and kind of get a theme of where it's going ahead of time? Sure, we can just uh, establish a, uh, a link. We'll 
where we can upload all the comment letters. Did and you guys tabulate them, you know, a couple of, between now and December 9th, it's probably five weeks or six weeks. You midway tabulate it just so you don't have to do it all at the last second. That's what I don't want to have happen. Right, yeah, we'll typically read the comment letters as they come in, and we have a, a pretty detailed process of, of handling public comp comments. So, I think that's what pops, you know, every two weeks as you tabulate them, if you could, it'd be easier to read 20 than 60. Right. I agree with that 100%. So if you could get them to John, then sure. I can distribute them. Yeah. And then get them out to us. And I would suggest as part of the December 9th meeting, as part of that agenda, we should include um, our tabulation of comments. Is, and so that the public will have that as well as long as, as well as the board but but you need to see it before then right yeah and I, i'd rather see 20 10 20 at a time yeah right? yeah okay i'm a slow leader <laughs> i'm not a slow reader i'm just adverse to six hour meetings as we go through each one <laughs> Anything else on the GSP status update? If not, I'm going to wonder why Roger makes these meetings go so long. <laughs> uh, information items. Yeah, I just I thought, considering we're moving toward the hearing, um, we should start putting information regarding the public hearing on the agenda as well at each meeting, and also that the draft plan is available at obgma.com. So just another way for the public to, to be informed about what we're doing. All right. I feel guilty, but we're at adjournment. Get <laughs> <laughs> okay. over it, Jim. Get <laughs> over it, yeah. And time no is? Over time today. It's All right. record. 3 0. Yeah, I, 3 -30. Richard's, Richard's got it? to step up his game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, we're adjourned at 3 30. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Bill.